So in this session, we look at some mathematical concepts relevant to mixing and agitation. More specifically, we will look at two important numbers, namely the flow number and the power number. Now a little bit about the nomenclature and we will be consistently using the same nomenclature and this is used uh, in most literature on mixing and agitation equipment. The diameter of the vessel is denoted by dt, dA, this is one of the important dimension that will be used is the diameter of the impeller, meaning the distance between the edges of the impellers. This E is the clearance, so from the center of the impeller to the bottom of the tank, this is called E. J is the width of the baffles, H is the level of fluid in the tank. And for the impeller itself, this dimension is known as length or L, and this dimension is known as the width. So you see this is a four blade turbine impeller, you can see the top view over here, there are four blades. Now in deriving the basic mathematical formulation for the impeller, there are some assumptions made. A turbine or propeller agitator is a pump impeller operating without a casing. So the theoretical development on pump impeller are used, however for this case, we assume that the turbine or propeller, these are pump impeller operating without a casing. So the governing equations for centrifugal pumps are used in the derivation of the mathematical equations. Now we'll use some notations for considering a straight blade turbine. Use the velocity of the blade tips. VU is the tangential velocity of the liquid. VR is its radial velocity and V its overall velocity. Now next we'll see how to use this to determine two important properties for mixing and agitation equipment which are called one the flow number and two the power number. So to start with let's look at the schematic representation of an impeller. We take the example of a turbine impeller here however the mathematical formulation will be valid for other impellers and propellers as well. Now let's first look at the concept of the flow number. So here our objective is to calculate the flow through an impeller. So to do that, we need to calculate two things because Q, this flow will be velocity times the area perpendicular to the flow will be noted by AP and the, where the radial velocity is VR. Now let's look at the velocity of the fluid. So at the tip of the impeller, what you have this U, this denotes the linear velocity of the impeller itself liquid at the tip of the impeller, it will have a velocity, something a fraction of that, the velocity of the impeller itself. So that will denote by VU. Also it will have a radial velocity, which is denoted by VR. Now from this velocity of the fluids and the velocity of the impeller, we can find an expression for what is VR because we need the radial velocity and we need the area perpendicular to that velocity to calculate the flow through the impeller. Now if you look at the impeller configuration, if you look at now why you are considering the radial flow and the area perpendicular to the flow. Now if we have the impeller here, and we just simply draw some sort of diagram there. So when the impeller rotates on the surface, it creates a circular area and also with a thickness equivalent to the width of the impeller. So we need to find that area. And as the liquid is flowing out through this area, we want to find that radial velocity. Now let's look at how to find that radial velocity. So now if we denote this angle by beta, so this is, we can write u minus vu and if this is vr, so this will also be vr. So you can write vr to be u minus vu tan beta. 
you can consider this here. So this is Vr and this u minus Vu. So tan beta equals to the ratio of this and this. Now we know that u, that's the velocity of the impeller tip. If the impeller is rotating at a rotational speed n, it's rotating n times per unit time. So we'll have in one rotation is pi times dA. So the linear speed of the impeller is given by n pi dA. So if we denote that Vu is some fraction of this n pi dA, if this is k, small k, n pi dA, we have Vr to be 1 minus k n pi dA tan beta. So that's how we get this Vr. Now what is AP then? So this AP is the area perpendicular to the flow. So this is coming out of this. So this area will be a circular area with the total length equal to the perimeter of the circle that's given by pi dA and that area will have a width equal to the width of the impeller and if we use that notation W you can have pi dA W. So next we get Q equals 1 minus K n pi dA tan beta pi dA. Now there are some other things here that the velocity profile of the liquid is not the same for the entire width w. Rather it has a velocity profile something like this meaning at the tip of the impeller right at the middle the velocity is high and near the edge the velocity is low. So just finding the details is only done experimentally we can say that this velocity is a fraction of this so the velocity q we can write it to be some fraction k and we have this term 1 minus k we'll have pi squared tan beta n da squared W. So just adding this term here simply the true velocity will be some fraction of this. So that's why this fraction here. Now from here you can simply write Q proportional to if these are all constants in dA square W. Now we know that W is also proportional to dA. So meaning that we maintain the ratio of dimensions so w is proportional to dA so this gives q proportional to n dA q or we write q over n dA q that's a constant and that constant is written as n q or the flow number. The flow numbers for different type of impeller are available in the literature and you can use those values to calculate the flow rate through an impeller. For example, for marine propeller with a square pitch, the flow number is 0.5. For four blade, 45 degree turbine with a ratio of width to diameter of the impeller to be 1 over 6 is 0.87. For a disc turbine, the flow number is 1.3 and HE3 high efficiency impeller is 0.47. Now these values are obtained experimentally and available in the literature for different propellers and we can use this for our own design. Now let's look at the concept of what is called this power number. Now the power required for an impeller is given as Q times EK where Q is the flow rate of liquid through the impeller and EK is the kinetic energy per unit volume of the fluid. So we got Q to be from here, you got Q to be NQ, that's the flow number times NDAQ. Also we have EK, 
this to be half rho v square or v is the velocity of the fluid now this v as you can see here this vr it's it becomes a fraction of the linear velocity of the impeller tip itself so you can say that that the velocity of the fluid which is the net velocity of the fluid can be given by v equals some fraction of the velocity of the impeller tip now if you plug in this over here we get p to be nq n da cube times half rho alpha and u n pi da and that's squared so what we have here this becomes n q pi squared n squared da pi times rho or you can write p over n squared da5 rho that's which is a constant so this constant is called this np or power number so we get the power number np to be p over n squared da5 rho so that's the definition of power number and we got the definition of flow number to be like this now what is the use of this power number and the flow number this power number and flow number are used to estimate the flow and power requirement for an impeller in the literature there are val values available for this flow number for certain impellers and for that impeller if you know the rotational speed and its impeller diameter we can determine the flow the same way there are experimental values available for the power number for different impellers and if you know the rotational speed the diameter of the impeller and the density of the fluid you can find the power requirement for the particular impeller